happy 3rd of July. <laughs> you know, just a declaration like this can change your perspective and build your faith. There's a, there's a spirit of hopelessness, of course, that, uh, that tries to attack us when, and tries to take over our mind when we're going through a difficult time. It blinds us to solutions. And if you're ever gonna begin to overcome some of the mental battles that you're facing, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a key to overcome the mental battles that you're facing. Get your mouth proclaiming what you wanna see. That, that, what I mean by that is, you know, there's life and death in your tongue. It, it will change your perspective. If you're saying, God's going to make a way, 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 what it's doing is building your faith. But it's also connecting you to the power source. The Bible says that God invades or he inhabits the praises of his people. There's a scripture that says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. And that just means that, will you acknowledge me when the doctor gave you a bad report? Or will you just acknowledge the sickness? Will you acknowledge me when you have a broken heart? Or, or will you just acknowledge the broken heart? Because we serve a God that heals the sick still. He heals broken hearts still. I, I know you're going through a, a, maybe a financial problem, but there has to be a time in your life that you get your mouth in order and in line with your answer. And you got to start saying, right now the bank account doesn't look good. Um, my job is not providing totally for me. But God, I thank you, Lord, that you're my, my provider. You're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. You, and you just start saying that. And you start proclaiming that. And then at that point, God could begin to work with that. If you, That's why when God... This made up his mind to create the heavens and earth. The earth was without form. It was void. It was dark. It was chaotic. And, and it says it was in that condition. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth. That means that the Holy Spirit was ready. God's Spirit was ready to take action on earth. But for the Holy Spirit to take action on earth, this is what he needs. He needed a word to activate his power. So when God said, let there be light, then the Holy Spirit went, in, went into action to create the light. The Holy Spirit is the power of God in action. So that means when you say be healed, the Holy Spirit has an opportunity to activate healing in somebody. But if you're only talking about sickness, and you're only talking about poverty, and you're only talking about the mess, and you're only talking about people, the Holy Spirit cannot move. And it's not that he's not powerful. He just remains hovering. Is there anybody here that's ready to say, I know God's going to make a way. I might be going through something, but I serve a God that though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear no evil. I know there's evil out there, but I'm not going to fear no evil because the Lord is with me. And if the Lord is with me, who can come against me? There has to be a time that you get, come on, you get your mouth doing warfare on your behalf. I am glad you're here and and we just came out of the growth conference. Anybody recoup yet? <laughs> some, some people are working on recouping, right? But you got tomorrow to recoup a little bit if, <laughs> on the 4th of July, right? But today, uh, we're going we're gonna to dive into Scripture. And, and, and for some of you that are new, we have a, a book called uh, the uh, Daily Growth Book. And the Daily Growth Book, we go through, we're all, the whole church, is on the same portion of reading the scripture every single day. And what we're gonna what we usually cover on Wednesday nights is we cover a portion of our weekly readings. And the portion we're gonna be covering today is Romans 7, um, actually or 7, 14 through 25. We're gonna go through that portion of scripture, and maybe you went through it already this week. And uh, what we're gonna do is get a lot more insight on that portion of scripture. And this portion of scripture I love, it's really talking about winning the battle within. Your greatest battles that you're facing aren't outside of you. And I think some of us, you're more concerned about people and things that are happening to you on the inside. But if you would start winning the battles within you, outside will begin to line up with your inside. 
You understand that? If you're defeated inside, you're going to be defeated outside. What, what allowed David to kill Goliath wasn't that, that David was stronger on the outside. He was stronger on the inside. So, so Goliath was stronger on the outside because he had more muscle, he had more experience, but he was dealing with somebody that was strong on the inside. He was dealing with somebody that had a strong relationship with God. He was dealing with somebody that had strong faith. And the reason he defeated Goliath, it wasn't because he had more muscle, he had more faith. There was something in him that couldn't be broken. I see how big you are, but you're not intimidating me because the God that's in me is greater than what I'm seeing on the outside. See, your problem are going to get smaller. Come on. Your problems are going to get smaller. Your faith is going to have to get bigger. Come on. Your strength is going to have to get bigger. Is there anybody here that wants to start winning some battles on the inside? Because if you can win your battles on the inside, you come on. Your outside, your life, your finances, your family will start lining up with your inside life. We do have a battle though. And, and we're going to talk about a word today called sin. And last week I talked about sin, and I guess we're going to keep talking about it. I, I, I think we're like living in a day that we don't want to talk about sin. We, wanna, we only want to talk about stuff that tickles our ears and makes us feel good. But I've learned this. If you don't conquer the sin in your life through the power of Jesus Christ, you're going to have a miserable life. We could give you all the candy you want, all the fast food you want, all the promotions you want. You could, you could marry the, 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 the be most beautiful girl in the world and still have a marriage like hell because what's on the inside is going to produce ever. ever. If, you're, if sin is controlling your life, it's going to be miserable. So let's go ahead. Are you guys ready to dive into Scripture today? We're going to talk about five truths. Five truths about winning the battle within. Five truths about winning the battle within. Father, we just thank you. We ask the Lord to guide us, teach us. And I thank you, Lord, that tonight people are going to get set free. They're going to win the battle from within. They're no longer going to trust in their willpower. They're going to trust in God's power, in your Holy Spirit power, in Jesus' power. Just like that young lady said, even Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, they couldn't, they couldn't fix me because I kept confessing I was an addict. And, and I had to finally realize who the sun sets free is free indeed. There's certain things that we can't overcome without your power, without your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, most of all, we can't get to heaven without Jesus. So I thank you, Lord, that today we'll learn how to conquer the battle within. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's read it, read it in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. And let's read a few scriptures. Now, when I go through scripture, uh, there, there's, a, there's also a mindset that tells us that you would read scripture. And if you don't watch it, I, I won't understand it. And, and once you start agreeing with that mindset, you won't understand it. But the purpose of the Holy Spirit, of God's spirit in you as a believer, is to teach you and give you understanding. But... As we read through this portion of Scripture, you're going to realize how simple it really is to understand it. Now, in verse 14, it says, The trouble is within me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself. I got some issues. For I want to do what is right, but I do it, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is my sinful nature. I want to do what is, what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Can you start seeing the battle within Stop acting like you don't have a battle within. I know you look really good in church. But if you're really honest, there's some battles that you're facing within. And I got good news for you. You can conquer every battle that's within you. But until you die, you're going to have a battle within you. And just because you have a battle within you doesn't mean you're not a believer. Many times the fact that you're acknowledging there's a battle in you proves that you're a believer. I got good news. We can win this battle, though. God will never give you a battle you can't, over, you can't come, overcome. Verse 21, I've discovered the principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, 
I inevitably do what is wrong. Verse 22, I love God's law with all my heart. I love the word with all my heart. I love God's commands with all my heart. But there is another power within me. There's another power within me. He's acknowledging there's power of God in me, but then there's another power in me. And if you don't realize that, that there's another power within you as a believer, you'll never win the battle within you because you won't even acknowledge that part of what you're dealing with is not your spirit, man. The parts that you're dealing with is your sinful man. And just because you become a Christian doesn't mean the sinful man is gone. That sinful man is just waiting for, to be tagged in. Come on, you guys, right? Am I, am I speaking truth? That old anger, that old attitude, that old sarcasm, that little, that all that lust and all that perversion, homosexuality, whatever you want to call it, is waiting to be tagged right back in. And what it wants to do is be tagged you. It wants to be tagged back in and then tell you you haven't changed. See, because if you would have changed, you would have still have these desires within you. But we're reading that Paul which wrote the majority of the New Testament, and, and he was a chief apostle, is saying this, I'm telling you, I'm dealing with some warfare and some battles within me, and I'm a believer. Right? Can we conquer this, though? Okay? I love God's law with all my heart, but there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. It's at war with my, this power, that, that, this bad power, this sin power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. There, I want you to get this. There's still potential sin within you. And it keeps on going. Oh, what a miserable person I am. <laughs> you know who's the most miserable person? Is a believer in sin. I mean, when you're a believer and you're sin, you're not even no fun to hang around with. You mess up everybody's high. All your friends high. You mess it all up. Because within you, you already know this is not who I am. This is not what I should be doing. It's absolutely wrong. And, and you're actually, at times, you're in sin, but you're still preaching. And you're telling all your friends, we shouldn't be doing this. Right? You're sleeping with your boyfriend, and after he's done sleeping with you, you're crying. And you, What's wrong? What's wrong? This is sin. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm a woman of God. I, I hate what's happened right now. This never has to happen. I'll never let this happen again. And, your guy, and the guy that's not even a believer is like, whoa. Right? Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin. Who's going to set me free from this miserable condition I'm in as a believer fallen in sin? I'm, and I'll tell you this. If you're not a believer, there is no hope for you on your own. You're going to attack Jesus in. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So is there an answer to this battle within is there an answer? I keep doing what I don't want to do and what I'm, do, what I'm supposed to do, what I don't want to do. And do. I don't even know what I'm saying right there. The wrong I don't want to do, I do. And the things I want to do, I don't do. I want to do good, but I do bad. Right? And, and so for some of us, that's a broken record. But I got good news for you. Paul asked the question, is there any help for me in the state that I'm in? Because I no longer want to be living this life dominated by sin, dominated by addiction, dominated by death, dominated by misery, dominated by sorrow, dominated by failure, dominated, come on, dominated by rejection, dominated by depression, dominated by anxiety. I am tired of living this life. Is there anyone that can set me free? Well, Paul answers, thank God. 
The answer is Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's go through the truth. Truth number one. Every one of us has an inner battle. Our greatest enemy is not on the outside of us. It's within us. Paul said, the trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to my condition. We will never win the battle within blaming someone else. You made me angry. No, the trouble's within me. Stop blaming others. You cannot overcome until you finally acknowledge this truth. You, may, you, you might be saying, you made me angry. You caused me to fall. You're the one that got me high. You made me hit you. It's your fault. It's your big mouth. You made me commit adultery. If you, if you were more loving and you would cook a meal after, after I go home, that girl at, 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 the, at the job, she cooked, me ba- she cooked me cookies. When was the last time you cooked me, made me cookies? I mean, you're going to blame me for falling and committing adultery when you didn't make no cookies? I guarantee you start making cookies, I'll, I'll just stop. You drove me to drinking. You caused me to be rude. The the reality is you could keep on blaming everybody for what you're doing, but you'll never overcome the battle within blaming somebody else. You must be responsible and take responsibility for your conduct. And and Galatians 6.5 says, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. No one can make you do nothing. You choose to do it. You choose to be angry. And the reality is, you are looking for an opportunity to go back to drink and to go to the bar. You're just using your situation or that person as an excuse to do what you really want to do anyways. And if you want to get high, you want to be angry, and you want to slap them, and you want to cuss them out, any excuse is as good as the other. See, we will never win the battle within until we... Hate the sin. In verse 15, I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Uh, we're still talking about the battle within. First, you've got to take personal responsibility. The other thing is you must get to the point that you hate the sin. you got to hate the porn. you got to hate the alcoholism. You gotta hate that you wake up with a hangover. You gotta hate that you're destroying your family. You gotta hate the repercussions of it. You got, if, until you hate the anger and hate the unforgiveness and even hate the hate that's in your heart, you'll never overcome something that you don't hate. As a believer, I gotta finally say, I'm doing what I hate, I don't want it. Let's keep talking about truth number one. We will never win the battle within without God. In verse 18 it says, I know that nothing good lives in, lives in me. That is my sinful nature. All it's saying is that unless I get a God intervention, the answer is not within myself. This is not, this is not more discipline. This is not a matter uh, of me getting stronger This is a matter of realizing this. I cannot overcome my sinful addictions without the power of God to set me free. Without Jesus, I'm still alcoholic. Without Jesus, I'm hooked on pornography. Without Jesus, I have an attitude problem. Without Jesus, I remain depressed. I remain sarcastic. Only with Jesus Christ can I overcome the power of sin because sin makes me a slave. You know what slavery means? Is that you're forced to do what you don't want to do. Is there anybody, I, we're not going to raise your hands yet. At the end we will, but. But think about this. Is there anybody that's thinking like, man, there's things that I hate that I'm doing. I want you to understand this. The devil wants you not to hate, not only, the devil doesn't want you to hate what you're doing. He wants you to hate you. The scripture is not saying hate you. Is you got to hate your sin. And realize that sin isn't me. 
That lifestyle is not me. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I made up my mind. I don't want that kind of lifestyle. I'm not, I'm not going to identify with my sin. I am not going to be an alcoholic, a drug addict, a failure, rejected and abused for the rest of my life. I am done with that. That is not my identity. That's my sin. Right? I know that nothing good lives in me. That is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right. Say it with me. I want to do what is right. But what does he say? But I can't. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Stop trying to change you without the change agent. Because the change agent is Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, you're still a gangbanger. Without Jesus, you're still an adulterer. Without Jesus, you stop their marijuana and you pick up the cocaine. All you do is rotate your sins. We're not talking about doing a merry-go-round. We're talking about getting set free from the merry-go-round that you've been in. God doesn't want you to juggle your sin. He wants to set you free from your sin. And he wants you to start winning the battle within. Truth number two. Every one of us. Every one of us has lost the battle within one time or another. I discovered in verse 21 the principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. That means I've done it. Have you done it? Of course. Every one of us have. We've all sinned. In Ecclesiastes 7.20, it says, not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. There's not a person on earth that's always good and never sins. Well, pastor, are you always good and never sin? Nope. Right? I tell you some of the stuff I have issues with. Right? I don't, don't always do good. There's, there's stuff I say I shouldn't be saying. And now I got to say I'm sorry, especially to my wife. Right? Right? There's things that I've looked at I shouldn't look at. I don't always do good and never sin. Right? You understand that? There has to be, I got to acknowledge this thing and I got to confess this thing. But I also have to realize without the grace of God, without the power of God, without the power of Jesus Christ, I can't overcome it. Some of you guys are trying to do what only God can do. And you're practicing religion where you should be practicing faith. Religion, what it does, it gives you 10 rules, and, and you just try. I'm going to try my best this time to do it. And God says, you can keep trying, and you're going to keep failing. Because you're, the answer isn't within you. The answer's in me. Amen? There are, this is the idea. There, there are two forces that are fighting for control with every believer. Every, two forces. Now, this is going to help someone because the devil's been telling you're not a Christian because you're, you're realizing there's another force. And the devil's telling you, the devil's telling you, because you have that other force, you, you're not really saved. You, you do idol crushing tonight. And I'm not saying you do idol crushing and there might not be a temptation to come back tomorrow to make the idol crushing seem like a lie. No, but this is just the battle that you're in. But I got good news, you can overcome the battle that's within. There's no sin that you can't overcome through faith in Jesus Christ. In Galatians 5.17, it says, the sinful nature wants to do evil. The sinful, now, all of us have a sinful nature. That's like the old cartoons back in the day, right? You got the angel on one shoulder, and then you got the devil on the other. And the sinful nature, what it wants to do is evil. The sinful nature is the one that, like, like for me, my sinful nature, like, wants to get back at people that honk at me. I mean, today it hit me. Someone honked. I'm, I'm making a right turn, and the guy's honking. I'm like, praise the Lord. All right, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right? <laughs> Some of you guys, the sinful nature... It's alive and well in your home. Everything your husband or wife does gets on your nerves. 
And you're thinking, well, that, it's just him. Stop blaming. You got to take personal responsibility, and it's time for you to grow up. And you can overcome that anger. You can overcome the sarcasm, and you can overcome the cussing, and you can overcome, come on, you can overcome the meanness. I'm just a man. Stop saying you're just a man. If you're a believer, you're more than just a man. You're a supernatural man empowered by the Spirit of God. You can live a supernatural life. You can live holy, a holy life. You're not just a man that has needs. You're a man that has a God that supplies all of your need. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what your spirit wants. So now if you're a believer, you have the Spirit in you, and the Spirit is giving you desires to do God's will. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting against each other. These two forces are what? Constantly. So you're going to have to be aware of the constant battle you're in. Now, I don't want you to get all freaked out and overdo this thing. But you're going to have to acknowledge, is this stuff from God or is it not from God? You just got to be aware of the battle that you're in. Look what it says. They're, these two forces are constantly fighting each other. So we are not free to carry out your good intentions. That means I want to do good, but and then there's another nature within me that's trying to fight me from doing good. Have you noticed that when you try to, when you make a decision to do something that will lead you to success, there seems like there's always a lower nature trying to stop you from being disciplined, from following through, from showing up to church, from reading your Bible, from praying. Uh, it, it's fighting. It, it, it tells you, hey, just watch YouTube. Just, re just relax. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to do all that. Look at this. I'm going to give you an example. The sinful nature says, hate them. The Holy Spirit says, love and forgive them. The sinful nat nature says, cuss them out. God will forgive you. The Holy Spirit says, bless those who curse you. The, the sinful nature says, sleep with her. Or him now. The Holy Spirit says, wait until you get married. Be pure. The sinful nature says, lie. The Holy Spirit says, tell the truth. Your sinful nature says, watch porn. It's not hurting anyone. The Holy Spirit says, he who lusts after a woman has already committed adultery in his heart. Cut it off and let me fill your heart with my pleasure. The sinful nature says, put off giving your life to Jesus. Not now. The Holy Spirit says, today is your day of salvation. We lose the battle within when we follow the desires of our sinful nature. This is what losing looks like in Galatians 5.19. This is what losing looks like in Galatians 5.19. This is what losing looks like. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality. It's a, it's a, a Greek word, pornonia. Porn, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. That's what it looks like. That's what losing looks like. Impurity, a lustful and immoral mind, and uncleanliness. So that's to do with not, not just you're involved in it, but it's taking over your mind. Now you're getting to be a dirty-minded person. You look at every girl with lustful intentions. You don't see a sister in a church. You see a sexual object. And because you've been feeding your mind. Now understand, you cannot be feeding your mind lustful Im images without having an unclean mind. Uh, help me, Lord, overcome porn. And God, and, and God said, will you just cut the porn off? You're not going to overcome the lust. You're not going to overcome the porn until you start getting drastic enough to say, I'm going to cut it off of my life. I do not need it. And whatever, if you have to get rid of your phone because you don't have the discipline, then get rid of your phone. Go, go back to dial-up phones. Go back to landlines if you have to. Cut off the cable if you have to. Stop trying to be strong with HBO and Cinemax and all that stuff. Just cut the stuff off and stop trying to be strong. If your, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. I don't want somebody doing some surgery on themselves this week. I'm talking about spiritually. Someone shows up with no hands next week. All right. Lustful pleasures is what losing looks like. Unbridled lust, promiscuity, shame, shamelessness, and 
bold immorality, lewdness, vulgar sexual character and behavior. We're seeing some of this stuff in, in the pride parades. I mean, we got grown men around children, naked and acting out sexual acts. It's right there parading and it's not illegal. Because we're living in a, we're living in a sinful world that promotes sensuality, promotes sin with no shame. And that's why the devil already knows this is shameless, shameless, bold immorality. Vulgar sexual character and behavior. It's not that you're doing it, it's that you're proud of it. And, and not only proud of it, you're showing off how sexual and lustful you are. The way you dress, the way we're dressing, the dances that we're involved with. You, you as a believer, the reason, one of the main reasons you can't go to the club, because the club, when you go there, the dances and the music are sexual. You're basically having sex with a person with clothes on. I was getting quiet in here. <laughs> Idolatry, the worship of someone or something other than God, as it were God, image worship. Sorcery, pharmacia, the use of and or the distribution of drugs, poison and with. Uh, drugs, poison and witchcraft, the deceptions and seduction of idolatry, hostility, hatred, animosity, a feeling of strong dislike. This is what losing looks like. Quarrel and jealousy, envy, feelings of resentment and ill will against someone because of that person's success or advantages or possessions. Outbursts of anger. Thymos means a fierce anger with deep resentment accompanied with vengeance, punishment and hard breathing. Selfish ambition. It means to push oneself forward, self-seeking, pursuit of position or, or office by unfair means, unruly, uh, ready, an, re, readily angered and irritable. Dissensions, a spirit of disunity, strong disagreement, a, a contention or quarrel, discord or ir, irritable. Dissension, did I just say that one word? Division, a group of men following their own sect of teachings, heresies, false teachings, and variants. Envy, a feeling of dis discontent or covetousness with regard to, an to another's advantages, success, possessions, accompanied with a desire to harm, annoy, frustrate, murder, or humiliate the other person. Bitter ill will, malice, drunkenness, intoxication, being, a being in a temporary state in which one's physical and mental faculties are impaired by the excess of alcohol, wild parties, Comos, that's what it means. Parties that last late into the night with excessive and boisterous noise, drinking, lustful in dungeons, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as, I've to, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or God. What he's saying is if your sinful nature is leading you to do these things, and you're practicing it with no reserve and no repentance. Understand, even though you call yourself a Christian, you will not go to heaven. Practicing sins, sinners will not go to heaven. Only repentive sinners will. And I'm not saying you need to be perfect, but you could never agree that this lifestyle is part of your lifestyle. You are a man, a woman of God, and God's giving you his spirit to overcome the power of sin. For this purpose, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil, and the works of the devil is sin. We've been set free by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ from the power of sin and death. There's no sin that Jesus cannot set us free from. It's time for you to claim your inheritance as a believer. Jesus paid a high price for you to be free. Accept it. Believe it. Claim it. Truth number three. We can love God's law and his commands and his word and still break them. Like I love God. I love his word, but you can still break it. I love verse 22. I love God's law with all my heart. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. Uh, we got to get rid of the spirit of condemnation. I'll tell you, Satan's tricky. He'll tempt you to sin and then he'll condemn you for sinning. I can't believe you did that. Well, you don't want to tempt me. How can you not believe I did it? <laughs> uh, do, you, do you understand there's a system out there to get us trapped? Like, I, I'm going to give you an idea. I, today, I'm preparing the sermon, and I'm on Bible Gateway where it's all, like, Scripture. But on the bottom, 
is all kinds of sensual women with like clothes to buy. Like, what does this have to do with the Bible? Like Kardashian, Kardashian, Kardashian not a Kardashian. The Kardashians are there, models and all that stuff. Just like, like uh, there would be like pajamas and all that stuff. And, and it's so, te- it's tempting to maybe just, what is this? What is this sorcery here? Let's get down to the root of this demonic trap here. We're going to study this right now and see how the devil's working. And we're going to get down to the nitty gritty here. So all day long, I'm just ignoring all those pop-ups. Have you seen those pop-ups? On Bible Gateway, I know, it's weird. Like on that one, I'm like, what? Maybe they know that Christians, like the devil already knows that Christians have this war within them. So while they're studying the Bible, he goes, maybe just, why don't, why don't I set up a pattern that while they're studying the Bible, they they tap into and they lose the battle within so I could conquer all the revelation when they're reading the Bible. Are you still with me? Now, why would I want to fall in love with the law of God, the word of God, the commands of God? I'll tell you why I should fall in love with it. Because when I obey the word of God, I'm going to tell you this. This is why I love the word of God. It makes me happy. And when I disobey the word of God, it makes me miserable. That's why when you get high, you got to keep getting high. Because you go up and then you come down lower than you ever went up. The down is high, it's, it's way lower than you started. So now you're a dog chasing after your tail. No matter who you sleep with, no matter what drug you take, no matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter who you cheat, it doesn't matter how much lying you do, it doesn't matter how a party you do, you could go from club to club all weekend long. By the time you're done clubbing all weekend long, you're going to be miserable and depressed and lonely. Look at this, Psalms 119. But if you'll just give your life to just start obeying his word, you're going to be happy. Psalms 119.16, it says, your laws, look at this, make me happy. I will not forget what you've taught me. Verse 24, yes, your laws make me really happy. They show me how to live, the way to live. Verse 47, I love your commands and they make me very happy. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You want to start living a happy life? You want to start living a joy-filled life? Start, start saying, God, send me free from the power of sin and then give me a desire to do your will. And when you start doing God's will, God's will in it is joy. In it, there's peace. In it, there's victory. In it, there's satisfaction. There's nothing that can satisfy you like living for God. Truth number four, there are always three consequences of losing the battle within. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from the life that is dominated by sin and death? Consequence number one, sin comes with change. Slavery and addiction to sin. The, and John, John 8, 34 says, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. That means it captures your mind, it takes over your thought process, it leads you away captive, it brings you under its control. What? Sin gets you under its control. You get to the point that you can't do what's right because you're under the control of sin. Sin wants to, sin wants to make you a slave. Sin wants to put chains on you. It wants to take over your life. It wants you to develop a cycle of misery and death and suffering and losing Consequence number two is misery. Sin comes with extreme unhappiness. That's what it means. It means to be troubled and disturbed mentally with worry, pain, depression, torment, lack of peace, anxiety, sorrow, to be very unfortunate, feel worthless, to suffer great mental and emotional distress. Sin, that's why there's the number one cause uh, of, of, of disability today is depression. Because the more sinful we become, the more miserable we become. The third consequence of sin is death. Death. Sin and, sin and death always come together. And the word death means, it's a, a Hebrew word, I mean a Greek word, thanatos, and it means the misery of the soul. The misery of a soul rising from sin, which begins on earth. So that means the more we sin, 
the, the, the misery continues to grow. It's like a cancer within us. And it could even get to the point that you become suicidal. If you're in this room and you're suicidal, don't kill yourself. Don't you give up. Get rid of your sin that's causing a suicidal spirit that's trying to kill you. But the problem is you're thinking if I kill myself, it would relieve the pain and the hurt and the suffering. But the problem is the sin, the misery continues all the way to eternity in hell. It only escalates. Unless you get set free from it, it's only going to escalate. No pill can solve your depression problem. But, there's a, the, but we're talking about the gospel, can. We're talking about the word of God, can. Jesus can set you free. This is your moment for freedom. God is saying, I'll set you free. Death. Death means bondage and, and emotional distress and hell. And truth number five, which is the most important truth. We can win the battle within and overcome the power of sin. That's a wrap. We can win the battle within and overcome the power of sin within. Because Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose again on the third day to take all your sins away. Now it's time to give your life to him. He's the only one that can cleanse you of your sin. One, two, three, raise your hand to the sky and serve Jesus. That's the reason why. I wanted to be a rapper, so I just kind of play with it here. All right. I'm a born-again Christian. My life, no. All right, let's go. Part two. No. Now, I want you to get this. He goes, who can set me free from this cycle? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. It is through our faith in Jesus Christ that we win the battle for within. I can't save myself. I cannot set, me, set myself free from the misery. I can't set myself free from the consequence of death. I can't set myself free from the addiction. But there's a Lord and Savior that died for my sins. He resurrected from the dead and he conquered. And he, he, he sent me free from the power of sin. And all I need to do is believe in him. And 1 John 5, 4 says, for every child of God defeats the evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Verse 5, who can win this battle? Who can win this battle against the world and sin? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It is only through Jesus that we, it is only Jesus that can set us free from the slaver of sin. In Romans 6, 1, it says, well then, should we keep on sinning? So that God can show us more of his wonderful grace. Verse 2, of course not. Sin, since we've died this sin, I'm done with that sin. How can we continue to live in it? It was that, that was that sin and that misery that brought me to Jesus. It was the addiction I couldn't overcome. It was a cycle of destruction that I couldn't break. Something had to break in my life. I came to Jesus to be done with the sin. I couldn't fix it myself. The doctors couldn't fix it. The psychiatrists couldn't fix it. The drugs couldn't fix it. I was still empty on the inside. But there was a God that reached down, reached down in the depth of my pain and my addiction. And he says, son, just put your faith in me. I'll set you free for who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now you are free from the slavery to sin and you become slaves to the righteous, to righteous living. But now you are free from the power of sin. Now you are see free from the power of sin. Now you are free from the power of sin and to become slaves of God. Now you do those things, now you do those things that lead to holiness. Now, do those things that lead to holiness and eternal life. And I got good news. We're going to end it with this. In John, in Jude 24, 25, Jesus is able to keep us from falling into sin. Now to him who is able to keep us, keep you from stumbling and falling into sin. And to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless in the presence of his gl glory with triumph and joy and unspeakable delight. Toward verse 25, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are we forgiven from the penalties and the power and the misery and the slavery of sin? I got good news for you. It doesn't matter how bad you think you are. There's a God that's bigger than your sin and he's not here to judge you. He came to save the lost and the broken and the hopeless and the suicidal and the depressed and the anxious and the failures and the adulterers. If you fall into any category that I mentioned tonight. There's a God that you can call on. Put your faith in Jesus. He'll save you. He'll forgive you. He'll fill you with His Spirit and give you the power to live a life and start winning the battles with Him. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Let's stand up. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. The sinful nature wants to tell you to leave right now. But the Holy Spirit says, stay. We're going to dismiss him in a second, but I want to let you guys know this. God loves you so much. This is the battle that we're all facing. And, and people say, well, I'm born this way. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. We're all born sinners. We're all born sinners. Nobody not born a sinner. You might have a you might lean in a certain sin more than the other. That's your lean. But don't make it your identity. That's your sin. But there's not a sin that God cannot forgive you of. Give you power over the desire. And give you a new desire that's greater than your sinful desire. I love it. It's not, I'm going to tell you this. It's not that I'm not tempted to sin. Is the desire within me to please God is greater than the desire to sin. That's all it is. I get more joy of doing God's will than I do in sin. Any sin that I commit as a believer, I don't, I mean, I might enjoy it for a few minutes. But at the end, I'm miserable. Because the Holy Spirit tells me, hey, you don't have to live that way no more. Of course I'll forgive you and confess your sins. But why live in that cycle? You don't have to live in that cycle. Let's conquer this thing once and for all. Let's conquer this thing once and for all. Let's conquer the unforgiveness, the anger, the hate, the lust, the whatever. That list. The loser list. You read the loser list. We've all been part of that loser list. And some of us deeper than others. But it doesn't matter how deep you've been into that list. Jesus came to save you and set you free and forgive you. Will you receive his forgiveness? So if you're in this room tonight, I believe that even as you're giving your life to Jesus or, or you're recommitting your life to Jesus, so you're fine, saying, I'm done, with, I, like I'm done with this sin, and you're going to put your faith in Jesus Christ to set you free, I believe some people are also going to get healed. They're going to get restored in their lives. There's sin that actually causes sickness. But God wants to set you free, not only from the sin, he wants to cleanse you of the repercussions of the sin. I believe there's somebody who could get healed from, come on, from AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, from, come on, cirrhosis of the liver. I, I believe those sins can happen tonight. Those are repercussions of sin. But Jesus came to pray the full price. That's why by his stripes we're healed. Jesus did not just come to forgive you of your sins. He came to set you free for even the repercussion, the consequences of your sin. I thank God that even though you made some mistakes, God is saying, I paid the full price so you could be restored fully. Come on, someone's life is going to be restored. Someone's going to be restored with their kids. Someone's marriage is going to be restored. Because you're finally going to say, God, save me. Set me free. I'm done. So if that's you tonight. I'm going to count the three. Say, Pastor, that's me. Like, I want, I really, I realize that I've had a battle within, and I want to start winning. And what I want you to do is take action on your win. Take steps on your, I want to start winning. That's all we're saying. We don't have to identify where you've been losing in, because you know where you've been losing in. But you want to say, I want to start winning. And I found out that I could be set free from this cycle of sin and death and slavery to sin. I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. And I want you to get this. There's going to be a day you breathe your last breath. And look what it said. Those who are practicing the loser list, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not because there's, I want you to get this. It's not that that list disqualified them. It's that they never, they never rejected the list and said, I'm done with that. 
I don't want to live that life anymore. See, God's not going to force you to follow him and force you to be happy and force you to be forgiven and force you to have eternal life. He's not going to force it. He's going to offer you. You're living a miserable life. It's an addiction. You can't stop. You're on a downward spiral. And God is saying, I came to save you. I came to set you free. I came to heal you. I came to restore you. I came to give you the life you're looking for. But it's your choice. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus or... I need to start winning the battle within. I just realized I could win with Jesus. I want God to empower me to start winning in, with the battle within. I want forgiveness of my sins. I'm not sure if I would die right now where I'd go. And I want you to think about this. If you died, where would you go? He said, I think I'd go to heaven. I said, why? He said, because I'm a pretty good person. What the Bible says, we've all sinned. So we might be okay compared to your neighbor, but we're all sinners in God's category. That's why you need a Savior. And there's no amount of good. You can't save yourself. Jesus, that was the same. You're not going to win the battle with it until you recognize, I can't save myself. I can't fix myself. But there's a God that can save me. He's going to get the glory. What I couldn't get done with my self-discipline and my intelligence and my money, there was a God that came in and reached down and saved me and set me free. One, same Pastor, that's me. I'm ready to surrender it all tonight. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved today from that cycle of sin, death, and destruction and misery. When I say three, I want you to raise your hand, and then I want you to come forward up here. You, right, the reason I want you to come forward, this is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats and starting a new life. Some of you guys are going to get healed, set free. God's going to do something. Some people are going to get set free from demons tonight because, it, because it, with the sin, a demon came in. You're going to be set free tonight. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Say, that's me. That's me. I want to recommit. I want those that raise their hand, just come forward. Come forward real quick. Come on. Come forward. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Come forward. This is your day. Come on. There's been a cycle. Must be broken today. The devil wanted to destroy you. The devil's been wanting to take you out. Come on. The cycle's getting worse, but there's a God that loves you. Come on. If you're saying that's me. This has to be broken tonight. Come on. Tonight's the night. There's not a sin that you got, there's not a sin you can't overcome with Jesus. There's not a sin that you can't be forgiven of. Come on, church, let's give the Lord a hand. There's someone's daughter, there's someone's son. Come on, we're getting, we're getting ready for the 4th of July. We're celebrating freedom. We're celebrating independence. Come on, let's start off with spiritual independence, spiritual freedom. Awesome. 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 Give up your vaping. Right, he's giving up his vaping. We, it's starting again. Come on, give it up. It's starting again. Come on, bring your stuff up here. Come on, you gotta get rid of it. Come on, you gotta get rid of it. Proud of you, man. Come on, let's get rid of it. Get rid of the alcohol. Get rid of the drugs. Get, come on, get rid. Come on, get rid of it. This is your day. He's starting. Come on, he's starting the domino. Hallelujah. Awesome. Let's get set free. Does anybody want to share what they want to be set free from tonight? Anybody here want to share what they want to be set free from tonight? The reason I'm asking that because when you share it, it'll set somebody else free too. What do you want to get set free from? I want to be set free from nicotine. Oh, nicotine, okay. Do you, have your, do you have your cigarettes with you or no? Let me have them. There we go. This is how you get set free. This is how you get set free. This is how you get set free. All right, there we go. When you gave that up, you gave it up. Come on, you gave it up by faith. Okay, anybody, how many believe that God's going to set him free from the power of nicotine? It's, gonna, it's a generational curse going to be broken in the name of Jesus. Anybody else want to share what they want to be set free from tonight? And as you're declaring it, we're believing that God's going to set you free. All right, this is for my father, and I'm, I'm just so tired of this relationship. Um, I, I finally just let go today. It, it, it's been hard. I'm just all in my head, and I know I'm clouded from the devil. And Satan, bite the dust right now. Blood of Christ, you pour over everyone in this building for anyone going through anything, Lord Jesus. I pray right now that they don't suffer what we suffer through. What In the name of you, Lord Jesus, I'm free, and I thank God. Okay, he wants to get free from. Is, it, is, it, is that unforgiveness? Okay, amen. Let's get set free from unforgiveness. I'll do one more. I'll do one more. I've been working through things, but there's been a stronghold since I was very young from things that uh, have happened through me multiple times. 
And, uh, you know, I have a hard time trying to rely on God to keep my eyes straight. And it, it, it deeply affects me now that I've given my life to him. And, you know, it just, there's people everywhere, there's all types of temptations, and it, it hurts me, you know, with just a simple glance, and I'll have all this condemnation, and I, I cry to him, I write in my book, like, uh, the, just talking to him, and just to help me keep my, just, you know, it, it hurts me to fix me, and it, it just, what do you want Scott to say first from lust? From lust, from wandering eyes. Here we go. There we go, lust, okay? Now, I'm, I'm telling you, we can overcome, we can overcome, but it's a battle within. You have this sinful nature. You feed the sinful nature. It comes back with vengeance. So what we got to do is stay, come on, stay alert. It's a battle of your mind. Keep renewing your mind with the word of God. Keep showing up to church. Get involved in ministry. Fulfill your purpose. Okay? All right, let, let's pray. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you came to save me and destroy the works of the devil. I command every spirit of lust, of darkness, to leave my body and leave my mind in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead to give me eternal life and forgive me and cleanse me of all sin. I receive forgiveness and freedom in the name of Jesus. And from this day forward, I will live for you. I can do all things who, with Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me. Jesus, you're in me. Your spirit is in me, and it's greater than the temptation, than the devil, and the circumstances that I'm facing. I thank you for total victory. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs> let's, let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to pray for you. If you need healing, come this way. We're going to pray for your healing too. We're believing that right now is your time to get healed and be made whole. God bless you. Have a great 4th of July.